hey there kids, let's play a game, a fairly old game. But this is an indie game by Matt Thorson called An Untitled Story. So I guess it's technically titled. But uh, it's on. It's available on mattmakesgames.com. There'll be a link in the description. I actually found this uh, game from a uh, Let's Player that I follow, Agent JR. I'll, um, well, I'll make this a video response to the video of his I saw that introduced me to the game. It's a very fun Metroidvania type game in an untitled story. You begin as an egg in your nest, and the rest is up to you to figure out. Fight 18 unique bosses, traverse a huge game world, and unravel a mysterious storyline. The single player game features non-linear progression and five difficulty levels for extra replay value. You really buzzworded it up in here. But all of these, all of the phrases, best I can tell, are, you know, perfectly accurate, so, you know, he's just selling it well. Um, he's basically just saying that it's a Metroidvania game, but, uh, you know, I, I know what he's saying. Also included is Heist Mode, a multiplayer capture the flag style versus mode. Hook up a USB gamepad before starting to play it as meant to be played. Because, yeah, this is, uh, this is a platformer, so. You really should be playing with a keyboard. Or, not a keyboard, a gamepad. So I have mine all set up. And... You might notice the game windows are varying in size. This is very annoying. Um, you'll especially notice when you die. But, uh, you'll see. So yeah, it starts out being little. And yes, it detects your gamepad. It works pretty well with any gamepad you have plugged in. Uh, it's pretty nice about that. This is a game created by GameMaker by Matt Thorson. With support from EO, game development company, apparently. An untitled story. Um, do the credits roll or... Okay, let's not view the credits then. So yeah. It starts off tiny, but trust me, it gets bigger. Um, <clears throat> never mind. Um, yeah, there are four difficulty modes here. Um, there's easy, which I'm not going to play. Regular, I am going to play. There is difficult and masterful, challenging, to the max! So if you want to play to the max, you should play masterful. Don't play it your first time, obviously. It's a Metroidvania game, and the the window expands yet again, but it's not quite the full size. So yeah, let's play on slot 2. I started it just to make sure I got the controls down and set up my controller. Press enter to accept. This is the size of the game. Um, annoyingly enough, it is 6... Oh, I have to res I have to set up the controls again. So, excuse me there. So, control mode. Yes, we definitely want a gamepad. I highly recommend playing with the gamepad. Uh, if you have one, of course. Um, it really just feels a lot nicer with the gamepad. But you're an egg in MS Paint Land. That's a completely disparage the visual style. Um, for some, there's some obvious MS Paint-ness going on here, especially the nest. It's actually pretty ugly, honestly. But uh, the art style looks at least alright, considering that it almost certainly was done in MS Paint. Or, you know, an equivalent thereof. But yeah, that, oh. I can't get back up here, can I? But yeah, you're an egg, you roll around, you jump. These are save points, these sort of claw things that reach out of the ground to consume your soul. Just press down and you save at them. But some pretty fireflies. Considering how simple and how, um, yeah, just simple the, the art and the music is, uh, the music is really well done, and the visuals, they're not great, but they do their job just fine. Jump height upgraded, yeah! This sort of reminded me of, like, Metroid, where, you know, before you leave the first, like, room, you have to pick up your first upgrade, which, at first I was like, why do you do that? But I sort of realized, now, that teaches you, you know, this is a game where you get upgrades. So even if it's no challenge to get the first few, it does show you what upgrades look like, how to get them. It introduces you to the game pretty well. So yeah, you got a bird statue. 
Also, this is, as you might have noticed on the last screen, this is one of those games where holding down the mouse, or holding down the jump button makes you jump a bit higher. That'll be important later on. Also, I love that when you kill enemies, they make little, they tend to make little music notes. Ow. Pain. And the music in this game I really like. It's simple enough, and you know, it, um, it, I don't know what tools it, that were made to use it, but it's, I don't know, just simple. But I really like some of the music in here. And we've got some sort of red guy here. Some sort of Kami. Let's go get this Kami. Yeah. You and your socialist system are going down. I really like the boss music, though. I also really like that it does give you a hint for your first boss fight that you're supposed to jump on things. It's not always immediately um, obvious. Also, if you know, the boss music gets more frantic as you do damage. So... There are lots of usability things that were done really well in this game. I really like how this game was designed. Um, you know, the visual design isn't that impressive at all, of course, but uh, as far as usability, the game design, very well done. Um, it borrows a lot from, you know, typical Metroidvania stuff, but it still implements everything very well, and it's a game style I very much enjoy. And here we have a double jump. And I was musing on the the usefulness of the double jump a bit ago, and uh, I really like the double jump. You know, sometimes in some games it seems like, you know, they only use double jumps just to let you jump a little higher. But in reality, what double jumps do is they give you much, much more freedom in the air than is, you know, otherwise possible. Um, and, you know, they're so unrealistic, so it seems odd that so many games have them. Because it's just physically impossible, it's just ridiculous. But it gives you so much control, and such a feeling of control, that it's really nice to have them. So, what do we got here? We got... You might notice that pinwheel effect just means upgrade so, by now, so... You see that? Ow. Ow. And you want to get it. But first... Notice this here? We've got some arrows, yeah. Little niche. There are lots and lots of secrets. It's a Metroidvania game. You shouldn't need to be told there are secrets. If you know what that phrase means, anyway. Uh, if you don't, it's, um, it's a portmanteau of uh, Metroid and Castlevania. Which are two you know, adventure-style games that you collect power-ups. And uh, both big platformers. Most Metroidvania games are platformers slash shooters sometimes. This boss, um, initially I was like, uh, what? But, you'll note every once in a while it shoots out those blue fire things. It's not immediately clear that you need to hit those, but as you noticed back there, um, ow. It does shoot back at it, and it... Ow, I died. I was not paying much attention there. Um, yeah, when you get a game over, the screen resizes again, which is really annoying. Speaking of really annoying, my computer decided to dim itself, and also decided to lose focus. Okay. So, yeah. I forgot what I was talking about. That is why you do not have stupid power savings things that dim your... The annoying thing is, when I'm using my gamepad, my computer doesn't recognize it as input that uh, wakes it up. Um, normally when I'm using the computer, you know, the screen would never dim because the computer knows it's being used. Uh, for some reason it doesn't recognize the gamepad input as input, so it just ignores that fact and it is a pain in my butt. So if I randomly stop and have to jiggle my mouse, I'm sorry. It's not... That's not an inappropriate statement, by the way. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's why. But, as you note, there's this little purple guy over there. I'm not particularly sure what it's supposed to be, but it's the thing that you hit. It's always nice to get a clear target, even if I don't know what the hell that target is. There's sort of a target, so... Also, these things we get, these are, I guess, crystals or gems of some kind. Uh, they're basically money. Yeah, you can shoot by pressing. 
or er, you can shoot fire by pressing shoot. I thought it said you could shoot by pressing shoot. Kind of a no-brainer. But you can break these pots that you can see. Be patient around the thwomp guys. Um, ow. If you go to, if you get too pissy with them, they hurt you. But yeah, these pots, they infinitely respawn, so, um, there's not a limited number of gems. At least I don't think there is. They didn't drop gems that time, but, uh, I don't think you have to worry about hitting every single pot in the game. There is something you should worry about, though. Note these, um, stick figure things that are apparently torches here. So, since you know those are torches, we actually saw something very similar to that over here. Fire! Go! Yeah! What could possibly happen when you do stuff? That happens! Since it's a Metroidvania, there are some puzzles that make, um, that don't make much sense or, um, involve, you know, doing random stuff like lighting torches or killing all enemies in a room. Nothing you would immediately think, oh, I need to do X to get Y, but, uh, if you think about it and you try to interact with everything available in a room, giggity, um, you can usually, you can get most of the stuff without needing, oops, derp, okay. What you want to do here, jump, save your double jump to get over here. Um, the spikes aren't very lethal in this game. Um, I think that's probably, that probably changes a lot with the difficulty setting. That would be a good way to make the platforming a lot harder, is to just up the damage spikes do. Because currently they do 10, which is not very significant at all. Even with my relatively low health. Now see, I can just fall in there and it's no problem. <laughs> Though, uh, some of the times it is going to matter. Also, this is one of those games where if you fall off a ledge, um, you only have one jump. But if you jump before you fall off the ledge, you can jump and then do the double jump. So once you're already in the air, you're, you can only do your double jump. That got stuck there. And here is where your double jump kind of comes in handy. The double jump doesn't necessarily add that much height, but it gives you a lot of horizontal distance. Because... You know, once you start to go down, you can counteract that with a double jump. And you can cover about half the screen um, with my current jump height, like like I just did there. So that is not too shabby at all. Also, if you missed that um, power-up item I just got back there, there's sort of a hint that there's something there. Oh, by the way, there is a map. A very Metroid-inspired map. That sort of, it's color coded too, so it shows sort of the areas we're in. What's it called? Cold Keep. Oh God, thwomps. Those hurt. Yeah, this is a little safe niche here. So that's nice. Also, you can stand on the cannons. Just ow! Don't get shot in the ass repeatedly. Getting shot in the ass once is okay. Repeatedly, that's right out. I also need to save. Also, stop dimming yourself, stupid computer. Be very careful. I'm hunting rabbits. Aw, oh, crap. Save point, save me! Okay, I need a save point because... Crap. Um... This is not gonna work out. No, it's not. I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Okay. I don't remember when I last saved. Oh! Um, one thing about this game is extremely non-linear. Um, there's some stuff... Nice. There's some stuff you can only get with certain power-ups, so, you know, some stuff is off-limits at the start. There's a vague progression, of course. But, from what I can tell, um, there's quite a... Pretty much at this point already, there's a number of way, different ways we can go. You know, back here there's only one way to go, but uh, I've already gotten to the point where there's not necessarily a single way to go anymore. Or I would be if I didn't fall to my death and end up in a place where I can't go anywhere. 
But I did get the ability to teleport between save points, which is very, very important. So let's just find a important save point. I'm intentionally stalling. I've played a little into this game, and I do know there is an important area I need to find and save at. Also, boss rush, go! Well, not boss rush. Actually, if I can avoid being stupid, I can't avoid being stupid. There's something up here I can get to. Actually, is there a save point up here? Also, this is something I really like. Come on. This sort of shows you how to use these platforms. It doesn't even need words. I love when explanations are both helpful, but they don't, um... You know, it doesn't explicitly just need to tell you stuff. But yeah, you can see that the... The stuff those uh, cannons fire, pretty much the same thing as your shot. And it hits these blue things and it makes a platform. That just teaches you... Oops. To be a moron. It just teaches you how to use these platforms, basically. So, yeah. You just climb up here. And we get a save point. And there's sort of a gauntlet up here that I don't want to mess with yet. However... Aw oh yeah, boss time. Um, at first I was unclear what the deal was with this boss, with uh, when I can hit him and when I can't. He just stops being red when you can hit him. The weird thing is, he's constantly transparent, and I really don't know why. Because that sort of seems like I shouldn't be able to hit him ever, if he's transparent. But if you note, all the stuff he drops is slightly transparent, too. It's just slightly confusing, and I don't know why it is like that. But yeah, I like this boss fight. It's neat, but it's not that hard. In fact, we're already done with it. Also, these hearts the bosses drop fully heal you, no matter how much health you have. And we get stick to the bottom of blocks by holding jump. This doesn't sound very helpful at all, but it does let you avoid some enemy attacks, and you know, you can just stick up on there. You know, if there's an enemy coming or something, you can just chill out there and be like, yep, I'm stuck to the ceiling. Screw you guys. I'm the master of ceilings. I like being the master of ceilings. Also, you can get... You can come back and forth between that screen transition to get a... Crap. To get an impression of where those platforms are. I think I need better jumpiness to... Yeah. You know what? Crap. Never mind. We can't get that thing yet. I need better, like, jumpiness or something. Actually, maybe I don't. I don't know. I'm just not good enough at this game to actually do that yet. But we're going to get to that thing that I keep mentioning that, uh... Alright, action button. Alright. Wait, what's this place called? Night Climb. Why does the sky actually get lighter when you go more up? But yeah, you can just go between these two things, um, and you can briefly see where the platforms are. I think it would sort of be more helpful if um, I could just stand at the very edge and see the platforms, and then they disappear when I get closer. So I wouldn't have to actually leave the screen. And that way, you know, I couldn't see them while I was making the jump or anything. Yeah, we got birds, and we got a save point. And more birds. Can I say hello? No, I can't. I'm an egg. Are you, are you my mommy? You don't. You don't look like my mommy. Actually, I actually don't know what my mommy looks like, actually. It's kind of sad if you think about it. But I'm also an egg, so I can't see, so that's a big part of the issue. I can't talk to the birds, unfortunately. Maybe they're just racist against eggs. Let's get out of here. The, the intolerance is getting to me. Stupid birds. Think you're better than me? Yeah, look at you. You got a bowl on your head. You think that makes you better than me? I'm an egg. Screw you guys. This guy, this guy's a cool guy. Yeah, that, that's what I'm talking about. That's that's exactly what I say. You can buy items from this guy. 
you can get some help. At first, you can mostly get a health, and uh, if you notice, the red upgrades always health. The blue upgrades just do stuff. Like, most of them are jump related. What's this one? You can grab red energy clusters. This is something that needs explanation, so it does actually give you text here, so. Hold jump, hit the red energy cluster, there you go. And now we've got significantly more health, so that's very nice. More, yet more birds that won't talk to me. Hey baby, what's going on? Come here often? No? No? Oh, fine, don't, don't even talk to me, whatever. I wasn't even talking to you, I was talking to, to, to this guy, the, whatever you are. Yeah, this guy. He's a pretty smooth talker. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back and save, and next episode we will, I don't know, do stuff. There's like four different ways I've noticed that we can go now, so uh, I will pick one of them and go.